In this video, I'm going to build out this new studio backdrop using some simple supplies and I'm going to do it for under $300. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me. If you're into all things tech and DIY, please consider subscribing so you can join me for all future content. Today, I have a DIY project to share with y'all. If you're a returning viewer, you're used to seeing this side of my studio slash office. I built this whole site out in October 2019, and the whole process is covered in the very first video I posted to the channel. Since then, I've filmed pretty much every video from this perspective, and for most content, it works fine. But in some instances, it can be too busy, especially when I'm doing a build reveal or product b-roll shots. So a few months back, I did make a small change to this side of the studio, and I've recorded several videos over here. Let's take a look. So, the keen eyed of you know how I fit multiple backdrops into one space. I just hung a green screen. Now, while I love the versatility of a green screen, it presents its own challenges. The key to a good green screen effect is separating the subject from the green screen, and that's done with lighting. So you need to light the screen, and I've accomplished that very simply and cheaply with these fixtures clipped onto a one by two I screwed into the ceiling. Then you need to backlight or edge light the subjects, which means I need to be able to get lighting behind me yet out of the shot. This is easy if I'm just doing a tight headshot, but pretty much all my videos include a product or products. So the shot needs to be wider and getting myself correctly lit while also keeping the lights out of the shot is difficult considering this entire room is only 10 feet wide by 15 feet long. So I told you all that to say that I need another option, but I don't want to give up the green screen. I don't want to build out something permanent because, well, that's pricey and permanent, and I want something subtle, not a backdrop that'll distract from the subject. So the agenda today is to first describe my vision for the backdrop, then I'll go over all the stuff here and how it fits into the plan, then I'll actually build out the backdrop. I'm sure there'll be a time lapse or a montage of that. And then I'll conclude with my thoughts on the project, hopefully sitting in front of the new backdrop. So my vision for the backdrop was again, something non-permanent, it needs to be something I can easily put up over the green screen and take down. I also want something simple, not distracting and not techy. I want it to be different from my typical tech YouTuber set, like no shelves of tech products or 3D wall panels, which just for the record, I did long before it became the big thing to do. So my plan includes using a window to provide lighting to separate me or my subject from the background, but I'm not cutting a hole in my wall and installing a window. Plus, I want full control of the lighting, tone, temperature, and level, so I'm going to build a fake window effect. Then the rest just kind of fell into place. A window diffused with sheer panels, framed by curtains, and some simple primary lights. And this is the stuff I'm going to use to build out that backdrop. There's a set of sheer white curtains for the center of the backdrop. Then I'll have two sets of gray full length curtains that'll cover the entire right and left side of the wall. Now on camera, you probably won't see the entire wall, but it covering the entire wall does two things. First, it'll cover almost all of the green screen, which will prevent the green cast off that I do get on the rest of the set. It also provides sound dampening as I do get reverb with a solid wall directly in front of me in this small room. Then I have a set of lamps that I'll use as primary lights on either side of the window because, well, I like symmetry. These lamps are 
dimmable, but don't have a dimming switch. So I have a simple inline dimmer that I'll plug each of them into. Now to hang the curtains, I don't want a 10 foot long curtain rod or pole. So I'm gonna hang them on a length of rope that I'll hang on these hooks that I'll screw into the top of the wall. Once I get the curtains hung neatly where I want them, I'll use some zip ties to secure the top of the curtains to the rope. That way I can take them down, fold the whole thing up, and they won't slide all out of place. The nice thing about doing it this way is I can have multiple sets of different color curtains that I can just change between. Now, once the curtains are up and framed in the shot like I want them, I'll have the dimensions for the window. I have a few things to create that. For the light source, I have a 16 foot 12 volt white LED strip. These LEDs are adjustable through the temperature spectrum and dimmable. I also have this roll of reflective insulation. The plan is to cut it to slightly larger than the window and then mount the LED strips around the edge, lighting into the center, hopefully diffusing the light across the surface. Kind of how an edge lit TV or monitor is backlit. I'll keep the light strips themselves behind the gray curtains so there isn't a hot spot down each edge. Not 100% sure if that'll produce the effect I'm looking for. If the light is too uneven or falls off too quickly across the surface, I'll adjust the plan. If it's too harsh, I have this white PVC shower curtain liner to use to diffuse the light. The whole thing will hang behind the shears. This is going to be a very subtle light. I don't want it to blow me out. Just help separate me and especially B-roll subject from the background. As far as tools, all I need is a stub finder because I plan on screwing these hooks directly into studs. I also have my cordless drill to drill pilot holes for the hooks. And finally, I have a hot glue gun to attach the LED strips. And that's it. Let's get started. Here it is so far. I still need to put together the other lamp and properly light the whole scene, but getting this far has allowed me to get the measurements for the window, which is going to be four feet by four feet. Perfect, as I got 16 feet of lights. So now I'm gonna see if I can pull that build off. To create the faux window, I started by cutting the reflective insulation to size. Then I cut 12 strips the same width as the LED strips from the insulation roll. I used a length of angle aluminum for a cutting guide. This aluminum was actually plan B for attaching the LEDs. I usually always have a backup plan for a DIY project. Once I had the strips cut, I glued three of them together with a simple glue stick. The key to this is applying glue to both strips and attaching the glued sides together. I then attached the triple thick strip to the edge of the 4x4 four four sheet using hot glue. I did this for all four sides of the window, so I had a frame all the way around to which I attached the LED strip. I hung the window on the wall with a couple of lengths of rope using an adjustable loop. This way I can easily adjust the height of the window and keep it centered in the shot regardless of if I'm sitting or standing in the shot. And this is the point we're at. I think I've proved the viability of my plan, 
but I'm not completely happy with it. First, the shower curtain I bought is too thick and not translucent. It's, well, opaque. I thought I ordered a three mil liner, but I got like a six mil liner. Normally this is probably a welcome surprise if I was actually like lining a shower, but it doesn't work for my plan. Also with my F1.7 25 millimeter lens, it doesn't look too bad because I can get some bokeh effect, but if I switch to my kit lens for a wider shot, you can see that the light falls off almost completely within about a foot, I'd say. I kind of expected this, so plan B, I'm gonna cut more strips and attach them across the middle of the window, both vertically and horizontally, essentially dividing the single pane window into a four pane window. Then I have another 16 feet of LEDs that I'll attach to the inside of those panes. Now, this will result in LED hotspots like this. So then I'll cut a single wider strip to attach right through that pane to hide those. Then, of course, I'll have to run, I don't know, maybe to Walmart and see if I can find a piece of white nylon fabric or a three mil shower curtain to diffuse the light a little more. So let's do this again. Project complete. What do you guys think? I know, I guess I should address the sense of deja vu some of y'all are probably feeling. Now, I actually took most of my inspiration from sets from creators that I watch that cover videography and cameras or photography. Scene settings are kind of their profession and I've always liked the simplicity of their backdrops uncluttered, the use of primary lighting to frame the subject. Now, I thought I had not a completely, but a fairly unique idea, and I actually purchased some of this stuff months ago. Then, a couple months ago, I posted some videos about the M1 Mac Mini, so I started getting similar videos in my YouTube feed, and I noticed an LTT Mac review video in my recommendations, and I clicked and Linus was sitting in front of the exact backdrop that I had sitting in a pile in the corner of my bedroom. Apparently it's the set for their short circuit channel, which is one of their channels I wasn't subscribed to. I mean, they got like what, five or six channels and like a dozen sets. I missed one. I actually considered scrapping the plan, but first, some of this stuff is way past its return date and Ultimately, there are millions of creators on YouTube. No matter what I do, it'll probably look similar to something else out there. Mine's better anyway, because my window has sunlight. Anyway, in the intro I said the whole setup cost under $300. I ended up using an additional 16 feet of LED, so that brings the project to just over $300. I also end up using a lightweight fabric shower liner from Walmart. It actually was $2.46. It's actually a few bucks cheaper than the one I ordered from Amazon. I also got another bag of hot glue sticks and that was $2.67. So all of that plus a key light and a fill light and the light box set I'm using and have been in every video I've produced cost me $38. And you can put together a pretty decent looking set for 
under $350. Now, of course, you don't need to do the whole fake window thing. To keep it really simply, you can just use a solid white curtain, either on its own, or you can use something like the cheap clip-on work lights I have for my green screen. And then using a simple colored spotlight, you can do something like this. And you can use any colors or color you want. Also, a big chunk of my cost were the two lamps at over 50 bucks each, so you can go with something much more simple and cheaper. The point is, you don't need to raid Ikea or buy every nano leaf you can fit onto a wall to put together a decent video set. I mean, Unbox Therapy grew to millions of subs with a simple gray wall with gradient lighting, and it's perfect. So if you guys watching want to completely rip this idea off for your set, please do and put your own spin on it. And if this gave you any inspiration, let me know what elements you liked. Speaking of liked, if you liked any of this, don't forget to click that thumbs up. And again, consider subbing. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.